Hello, this is Hannah again from H Clay Corner, and in this video, I'm gonna draw an isometric pond or just kind of a cubic slice of water. The reason I'm doing this is because today, one of my students, one of my art students, is trying to do his isometric project, and the main idea was to do a a room, a bedroom. It's supposed to be your dream bedroom. And you can put anything you want in there and it could be fantasy themed it could be space themed as long as it's like a livable bedroom that could re exist in reality and one of my students really likes fishing and is interested in is always trying to paint fish and things like that so he was looking at preferences and saw these isometric cubes of water, like these slices of, of water, and he asked me if I could do that, and I said, well, as long as it sort of meets the requirements, requirements being five objects on the wall, five objects on the floor, if you fill in the pond with different objects, then yeah, sure, I'll count it. And he had a hard time just kind of mapping out everything, so I told him, you know what, I'm going to draw this myself and figure it out. And I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. So I am learning that it's so important to fulfill promises as a teacher. And so this is me figuring out this room. So really you start with a cube shape and I'm just penciling everything out. I did bounce the ideas off with the student that it would be really cool if there's an eel or some kind of water snake popping in and out of the cube. So here I'm trying to experiment with that. like. How is it going to bend and flow in and out? I was thinking of having the head on the inside, but then I was like, oh, when I go over it with paint, it's all going to be murky inside, so the head should be sticking out instead. You'll see that I go with one idea, and then I erase it and try it again. I'm just letting things loose here. I'm Kind of responding to what he was doing in his picture. He had that kind of tree in that left corner of it. Had a hard time placing it at the bottom of the of the cube, of the isometric cube, the the pond floor. This is like new language for me too. I, I'm teaching all about isometrics and I'm trying to still imagine these four these dimensions these six walls and what goes where and how much do we see of what angle or what corner. I hope my students like it. All of them seem pretty engaged with this project. I think it's getting to the end of the school year so some of them are getting a little, a little burnt out. I can tell. One student was like, oh, I have an A in the class, I don't have to do this project, I'll be fine. And I'm like, well, you still have two months left. If you keep up with that attitude, it's not going to be an A anymore. So I'm just trying to keep them trucking along, have exciting things for them to do towards the end of the year. Let them make some, some of their own choices and what they would like to spend their time with in regards to art. Like, they, they got to be making art in my art class. It's art class. While I'm sketching, I, I've been looking at references as well, so I looked up a canoe. You might have noticed I drew a person and then I erased it, decided to not go with that. For some reason, when I'm trying to do sketchy things like this, putting people in there is always kind of a challenge for me. I just try to keep it simple, I guess, and not have people. Just like in real life, haha, <laughs> hashtag single forever. That was a really dumb joke. I'm sorry, everybody. Finally, I'm starting to get in with a micro pen and trace everything out. Yeah, as this. As this video is currently being made, I'm in my first year of teaching art, and it's high school art, 
and it's been one of the most challenging things I've ever done. It's pretty difficult. And everyone I talk to is like, why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I At least I'm getting a lot of good experience. I, I haven't been around teenagers or kids for a long time, but I've been at college and on my mission for my church and just for the longest time, just haven't really interacted with, with people not my age. I'm not sure how to say that. So just dealing with teenagers has been the weirdest yet somewhat fulfilling experience. I try not to preach to them. I'm just I'm just there to teach them art and lead them by example. I hope I'm doing a good job. I've been told I'm doing a good job, so I shouldn't worry about it too much. I didn't really mean for this video to become a rant about my life or like a personal video blog about my life. I'm just kind of rambling. Now I got all self-conscious and I stopped talking. Oh. I think I'm going to start painting it in soon. Yep. Getting my paints out. I decided that I needed to paint in all of the items or the objects that are in the pond first before I went in with any blue for the water. I'm trying not to take forever to choose my paint choices, just choosing colors that will go together nicely. I chose to do red for the eel. I thought it would pop out better than green. When I think of ponds, I think of browns, blues, and greens. So I really needed just a bright color to pop out from that. So red definitely fit the bill. I like the way a red boat looks like on, on that greenish pond water. But the boat was going to be green. I think one of my favorite parts of this, besides the eel, are these kind of tree-like roots or reeds that are popping in and out of the water. That was really fun to, to figure out, and it just adds to the illusion of it being this three-dimensional sort of cube of water. This is actually a, a really fun exercise. I want to probably do more drawings like this and isometrics and see what else I can come up with, look up other references. Definitely, definitely, definitely get better at watercolor because I feel like my watercolor is pretty basic. I mean, it does its job, whatever I'm doing here. I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out, but I know it could be better with some practice and some time. I was putting my basic knowledge of cubes and shading in here, knowing that the top should be the lightest and the left side a medium, dark, and the right side the darkest. So here I have this kind of light cerulean blue and on the right. Wait, on the left, I have this light sort of cerulean blue, and on the right, I have this dark phthalo cyanine blue. In the top, I'm just going to put ripples of white and blue on the top. I don't consider myself the best drawer, but I am pretty dang good at just seeing a pic looking at a picture and being able to copy the shapes and edges of it and just making it work out somehow. Maybe I should stop being so self-deprecating. I'm really not trying to 
fish for compliments. Let's just try to get the base colors in there first before I do shading. Here I'm doing a little more shading, trying to get some dimension or definition to all of the objects. The eel being a cylinder with the light source being on top, trying to get a shadow underneath there. I really love how the face of the eel turned out. I just feel like it's super cute. I love the, the, the beady little eyes and the rounded teeth. I try to not make the teeth sharp because if it's sharp, it's not cute anymore. It's, it's evil, it's a predator. So if I round out the teeth a little, it makes it a little more soft, a little more pleasant to, to be with. Like the, like the Loch Ness Monster, right? The Loch Ness Monster isn't an evil thing. It's supposed to be cute and friendly. But that fisherman is not there anymore. I decided to not draw the fisherman, so maybe I implied a sort of dark story, and maybe the eel did eat the fisherman. <laughs> I'm just realizing it just went up and grabbed him with its soft, rounded teeth, swallowed him whole, and it's inside that long belly somewhere. <laughs> oh, poor fisherman. This is really one of those types of paintings where you look at it while you're painting it and you're not too happy with it, but you come back to it a day or two later and you're like, wow, that actually was really successful and it looks really great. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out for my first try. You know, I think it looks great for my first try. So my name is, is Hannah with one N. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you would like to see me paint.